you that what they're not going to be the, the main merchants are not in this country the main merchants and the people that uh, make these goods okay the factory owners all right the trademarkers they live overseas all right that's why a lot of these jobs are beginning to go overseas all right which is also another reason why this economy is depleting because there's no jobs in this country rather that these jobs are going overseas read on and saying alas alas that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and america is that great city spoken of here in the book of revelation read all right and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls right so america is a dainty critique country all right that's made rich off of the merchants that own her so this is going into the luministic families illuminati right. they're the real merchants all right and they're the ones that supplied america with these dts to sell to the people they're making money overseas okay off of this the warm the um the stock market the trade the commerce all right wall street whatever that that's their money all right that's their money that they're making the bulk of the um um the bulk of their money and their income is coming from that all right basically based upon what goes on here in america so let's go back to luke chapter um 11 16 verse 19. there was a rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day so then we just read in revelation the 18th chapter concerning about what was found here in america the fine linen and the purple we just read that in revelation 18 all right, so that goes to show you that one of the parables concerning, all right, uh, what Christ was speaking of here concerning the rich man is referring to the Illuminati. Okay, it's referring to the Illuminati. All right, all right. When you read um, um, like when you read James the fifth chapter, it's, it tells you about that. Okay, rich men draw you to their uh, seats and they oppress you. All right, which you might get that scripture later on, but that's the bottom line of it all. So read verse twenty out. Verse twenty, and it was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Which was laid at the gate full of sores. So Lazarus was an act was an Israelite. You understand that Christ raised from the dead. You can read about his story also in a different chapter, different book. Lazarus, what the scripture said, was full of sores. So who does Lazarus represent? All right, Lazarus does not represent the nation of Israel per se. Lazarus represents the elect. Lazarus represents the elect men of the Lord, the prophets and the teachers and the servants of the Most High, while you have a shot. All right, because the bulk of these niggas going to die. Oprah Winfrey, Michael Jordan, they got money and they fair and sumptuously. They're going to die. They're going to burn. They received their kingdom already. All right. So the ones who's full of sores, who's going through pain and tribulation, is representing the, the elect of the nation of Israel. Let's prove that. Hold that. Give me Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. Everything will be proven through scripture. All right, so then you will know that I'm not just making this up, okay? The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 32, because the Lord said that Lazarus was full of sores. You got to understand, this is a parable, all right? And, and certain things are standing for certain people, all right? So read the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 32. And what shall I more say read? for the time would fail me to tell Gideon. Right, so these are men of the Lord, okay? These are men of the Lord that, that Mark, I believe is Matthew, excuse me, that was the author of the book of Hebrews. I think it was Matthew or Paul. And basically, he's speaking of Gideon, okay, which he was the one that had concubines, right? Yeah, that's okay. right. Men of the Lord having yeah. concubines, which represents women of the other nations. And I believe he had children by, the, by, by those concubines also. Yeah, didn't he have a son by a concubine woman, and he named that son Abimelech? Something I like that. I believe that was Gideon too. Yeah. Yeah. That was him. Yeah. And uh, his concubine was from Shechem, and um, Shechem was a a, a place of um, Hamites or something of that nature. Yeah. And um, he went to his maternal side of the family, Abimelech. I'm talking about, and he tried to reign over them and say, "I be thy bone and thy flesh. Would you rather have a stranger rule over you or one of your brethren like myself?" And those were heathens he was talking to. Yeah. Okay. But his he was an Israelite because his father I think was Gideon. Okay, okay, but his mother was uh, a, a, Gentile a Gentile woman. All right, but here it is. Okay, in the book of Hebrews, Gideon's being mentioned as a man of the Lord. So if it's off to deal with a woman of another nation, and that's what Gideon did, then why is he being mentioned here as a man of the Lord? As we read on down, hmm. <laughs> if having another woman outside of Israel is just so, it's so uh, satanic. Right, right. right. Like our brother should know already. 
all right, in which we're going to continue to teach what the scriptures speak, is that the satanic part of dealing with the Gentile woman was a Gentile woman who were caught worshiping idols, okay? There were certain Gentile women that did not worship idols that we took as wives, all right? The Gentile women that were worshiping idols, we were not to have no part of dealing with them because they would turn our heart away from the Most High, and instead they would turn us into following after idols, all right? That was the problem, all right? But not the race part of it, but the fact of the cultural part of it, all right, was the reason why we couldn't deal with the Gentile woman. Not because of the race part of it, but the cultural part of it. The cultural part of it was that their culture was dealing and revolving around idol worshiping, okay? But the race part of it, just simply because she's not an Israelite, was not the reason why the Mosai told us not to deal with them. And matter of fact, when they submitted to the God of Israel, we did deal with them. Gideon was one of them. All mm -hmm. right. So now continue reading. Gideon and of Barak and of Samson. And Samson. Then he deal with Philistine women. Ooh, yeah. But Samson's being named and shot out as a man of the Lord here. All right. Read. And uh, Jephthah. Jephthah. Read. Jephthah of David. Also, there was not did not David deal with Gentile yeah. women? Yeah, plenty, man. Okay, the one that pops to my head the most is the Syrian woman he dealt with to get Absalom. I questioned men on my Facebook comment board about, oh, so you say that we can't deal with women of other nations? So was King David off? Mind you, the Bible says that King David was a man after the Lord's heart. Right, right. The sins that King David did, the Most High judged him for. When you read the scriptures, the adultery and the numbering of Israel and everything else, the several things that David went off on, the, he, the most I checked them on, and the scripture tells you that David went off. But how come the scriptures never spoke about David going off or dealing with the women of the other nations? Right, right. All right. right. Why didn't the most I check David or punish David for dealing with a Syrian woman? All right. And he had a child by her, and that child was Absalom. Okay, why didn't the Most High punish David for that? Why didn't the scripture speak about him being punished or wrong for dealing with a, 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 a heathen woman, a non-Israelite woman? See that? Obviously, that Syrian woman, the scripture never said she was worshiping idols, so obviously she was a Syrian woman that wished to serve the God of Israel through her husband, David, that they had a child by. All right, because the scripture never speaks about, as far as my recollection, that David worshiped idols. Right, right. All right, so obviously that Syrian woman was not into idol worshiping. That's right. Because otherwise David would be worshiping idols. Just like his son Solomon right. was dealing with a bunch of heathen, yeah. idol worshiping Gentile women. So that's why eventually as he got older, he began to worship idols and building homes for them. Okay, so now continue reading. Of David also and Samuel. And of the prophets, Samuel right. also had a concubine. They had a concubine yeah, too, right? They had a concubine also. Yeah, see that? They and then you got this concubine. new doctrine of men's teaching that, which got cut with, um, how did I cut that scripture? Uh, with, with Genesis 25, and there was another one. Uh, uh, with the uh, men, are, men are teaching that um, uh, the concubines were Israelite women. We cut that in our interracial mitzvah video, though. Yeah, but yeah. Genesis 25 cuts that with Abraham. But there was another one even during the time of oh, Israel. Um, uh, he's talking to the Levite with his concubine. Right, yeah. right, right. But I don't know. We got to go back into that because the scripture said that Levite concubine was from Bethlehem, Judah. Okay, I don't think I was looking at that one. All right. Bethlehem, Judah was a city of Judah. Unless she was a Gentile woman. I don't think the scripture per se went in depth on her being a concubine. It's we read the definition yeah, of concubine. Yeah, yeah. Was but there was another scripture. I think it was... Um, uh damn i think i put it on a comment board um we might have mentioned in one of our videos a show the concubine um outside of you know just the one abraham dealt with can also represent um a woman of another nation i think it was gideon matter of fact yeah, gideon, i think it was gideon i think i think, I think it spoke of yeah right i think gideon his concubine he had a child by yeah, and right. and name was abimelech yeah i think yeah. that's what it was yeah gideon yeah right no. gideon right he had a child by his concubine and uh -huh. She was of the of the people of Shechem, okay. Yeah. See that. So just just want to love the nigger woman. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Just want to love the nigger woman yeah. and get on your knees for her and paint her toenails. Oh, all right. Man. Like it's the like as if the nigger woman, but we belong to the nigger woman. Yeah, right, right. So she dictate who we sleep and deal yeah, with. Yeah. It's the same spirit that eventually will lead to 
you can't have another woman, yeah, kind of which will also lead to another spirit of you can't deal with a, with the ten tribes because the Hispanics are not Israelites. Because right. I'm jealous because they have long hair and, and I'm bald headed. Right, and they look better than me. Right? Yeah, they look better than me. Yeah. All right, which popular opinion does state that the Hispanic women do look better than the yeah, Negro right. woman. That's right. All right, because the Most High has cursed the Negro woman. The Scripture says. Burning instead of beauty. Right. You read Isaiah the third chapter because yeah. of the pride of the daughters of Zion. You understand? But that's another topic. But read on. And Samuel and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the prophets also dealt with concubines. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah, some of the prophets did. Moses. Moses was a prophet. Yeah, he had two wives. Beautiful. A yeah. And, uh, and a Cushite. Man. Beautiful. Yeah, and what did the Most High do to a sister? For uh, Miriam, uh, yeah, for rebuking him, right, because, running her yeah, mouth, running her big um uh, niggerish mouth, man. because Moses didn't deal with it as a like woman, and right. so the nigger woman, because we sister, right, because we read sister. when you read when you read Malachi the second chapter, the scriptures tell you that the um the daughters of Zion they get jealous when we deal with the women of the other nations, all right, and the Most High was rebuking Israel for doing that due to the fact that. Instead of loving the women that he gave us, meaning women of our nation, we end up dealing with the um, daughter of a strange God. Notice it says the daughter of a strange God, meaning idol worshiping Gentile women. All right. Meaning that the Most High, and the only reason why the Most High gave a damn was because we love these idol worshiping Gentile women more than him. So he got jealous. All right. And then he brought it to the terms of how our women was upset behind that because we was always dealing with Gentile pagan women. You understand? Which the bulk of Gentile women were off. Were off. You're right. Yeah, the but majority the majority of Gentile women were off. You're right. But at that time, the majority of our women were on point. Now, let's look at it nowadays. Is the majority <laughs> of Israelite women on point? See, men, were, men and women would have a strong case if, not to go off the topic because we're still going to break down Luke 16, but men and women will have a strong case with us dealing with being off or dealing with Gentile women, if there was just a sea of Israelite women that were just on point to right, choose right. from, all right? If there was just a whole sea of Israelite women for us to choose from, and yet we neglect them, like as if there's a whole bunch of single sisters waiting to be married, every damn woman that's in this knowledge has a husband or sharing one, all right? There's, a, there's, a, there's not that much Israelite women in this truth that are single, okay, and looking for men, you understand? So... When you really get the understanding, it's not like as if we have like a thousand Israelite sisters to choose from and we neglect them and go run and deal with a Gentile woman in the world. Wow. All right. Then I could see the Malachi, the second chapter being on point. But when you don't, when the nigga woman's not interested in the man of the Lord, because she's only interested in dick and money. Okay. Because that's what it is. Dick and money. Okay. How big is your wallet? How big is your rod? That's right, what the nigga right. woman's in love with. Your dick and your money. Okay, don't let it fool you. She's not with you because you have no scriptures. She just says that and she might be kind of entertained by it and she might be um, intrigued by it. But it all boils down to the lust factor, the dick and the money. Okay, do you have that or do you have this or do you have both? All right, it's not Proverbs 12 and 8 for the majority of these women. And that's talking about the ones that's in the truth. All right, so read on, brother. Verse 33, who through faith. Subdue kingdoms, mm -hmm. wrought righteousness. See that? Oh, they what these men wrote righteousness? Mm. But if they dealt with Gentile women, right, right. then how is it that the scripture is saying that these men wrote righteousness, righteousness if right. dealing with Gentile women was off and evil? That's right. And yet when I bring these scriptures out, men never mind them and go run to another scripture. No, no, no. Let us deal with this scripture first before we move on to anything else. When you guys pull out your Tobas 4 and 12s, you pull out your Nehemiah 13, 23s, you pull out your Ezra 9 and 12s, you pull out your Deuteronomy 7 and 3s, you pull out your 1 Kings 11 and 1s, we deal with them, man. Give the understanding and then we cut. Why y'all men, when we do roof, when we pull out our roof chapters, when we pull out Matthew's genealogy of Yahweh, when we pull out David, when we Tim pull out this scripture, when, yeah, psh, men just, whoa. Oh, man. You, yo, the you, ghost, man. you got a lot of brothers that believe that Drusilla was an Israelite woman yeah, in yeah. Acts the 24th chapter. When we bring out that the Jewesses were Edomite women that converted into our way of life, that just went over men's heads. They huh. never saw that one coming. Huh. They obviously they are they 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 believe that Timothy's mother was an Israelite woman, but the scripture says she was a Jewess. The Jewess women were Idumean women. She was a cracker woman that converted into a way of life. And you know what? Uh, you got that um, Edomite woman on YouTube making videos, or she was. 
Okay. She's still there. She's still there. She's still and there. she's she she's an Edomite woman right. that these niggas are losing their mind saying she might be Ezra. Okay, because they don't know the scriptures, no history. You got this Edomite Idumian woman. You got certain men in the camps with fringes on saying that they Ezra, but they Idumian men. Okay. And they're following.